wanted to discuss, discuss about our recent uh, uh, research. Uh, I don't know whether it has much to do with economics, but uh, it has uh, to do with uh, social behavior. And I guess in that, in that regard it has much to do with uh, economics as well. So, okay, the title is uh, Data-Driven Discovery of Circadian Rhythms of Urban People. Then there's a question, are we like fruit flies? So you may wonder, uh, does that have anything to do with economics? But uh, I think it uh, clears out during, the, during my presentation what, uh, uh, what I mean by that. And this is a joint work uh, with a number of people. Uh, uh, Daniel Monjewais is my, my graduate student who is about to finish his thesis, uh, PhD thesis, and then two um, Indian postdocs, um, Kunal Patacharya and Asim Ghosh, who are basically first and uh, second generation of students of uh, Bigas Sakrapat. And then Robin Dunbar, who is an um, anthropologist and um, experimental psychology um, professor at Oxford University. Okay. So uh, this could be also called social physics or uh, sociophysics of circadian rhythms of urban urban people. So the. Uh, uh, I divide this uh, thing to an introduction where I talk about uh, circadian rhythms uh, uh, from the point of view of biology first. Then uh, in general, the levels of complexity, emergent and scale of human sociality, and uh, then the computational approach, what we have been taken to these, uh, these uh, matters, computational or data-driven approaches. Then uh, about the circadian rhythm from the in information communication technology social point of, point of view and uh, mainly concentrating on the, on the mobile phone data that what we, have been, what we have been having at our disposal. Also some other data which uh, we have been able to connect and to fuse with the, uh, with the mobile phone data and last I draw uh, some conclusions. Okay, about the background and let's start from the biology. This year's uh, Nobel Prize in uh, Medicine and Physiology or Physiology was given by these three gentlemen uh, for their discovery, uh, discoveries of molecular mechanisms uh, uh, controlling the circadian rhythm. And they especially have been studying uh, fruit flies. Anyway, the first kind of discovery of curious phenomena happening was a, a, a French uh, 18th century astronomer uh, uh, who is considered a, as a geophysicist and, uh, and, um, and astronomer and also uh, perhaps as the first uh, chronobiologist. And what he was doing, he made an observation that he was looking at the mimosa, mimosa plant that when it, it is uh, in the sunlight, then uh, it opens its leave, leaves completely. And when the dusk, dusk uh, appears, then it crumbs its leaves. Then he had a great idea, put this, uh, this uh, mimosa plant in total darkness. But still, it was uh, um, uh, following the daily daily cycle, even in the total uh, darkness. So that was the first kind of observation that something, something is going on, so to speak. Then came these, uh, these uh, three gentlemen, 
for which they uh, got, um, for their research, they got the uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, they were looking at, uh, um, at the molecular level what happens and they found out that there is a, a so-called period, period gene in the cell nucleus uh, 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 which uh, uh, transfers to RNA uh, to the cell cytoplasm to generate uh, the protein called per protein. And that, uh, um, that happens uh, when actually the dusk appears, or then it, it's becoming, the sun sets and the dusk uh, appears and it's coming, uh, coming uh, uh, dark. So this production of uh, periprotein takes place uh, during, during the darkness period of the day. But then uh, they also found out that uh, uh, this uh, pair of proteins starts to accumulate back to the, uh, to the, cell, uh, uh, to the uh, cell nucleus. And that doesn't usually happen in this uh, protein uh, uh, production. But anyway, it accumulated to the cell nucleus in order to inhibit the uh, the uh, transfer of the of the um, of, of the of the uh, RNA to the to the um, cell cytoplasm. So there is uh, a, uh, there is a kind of inhibitory loop uh, created, which is the uh, in essence how this uh, uh, circadian cycle. Um, happens. But that, that is not the whole story. Um, they were wondering why on earth it uh, goes back to the cell nucleus, this per, um, uh, protein. And then, um, uh, especially during the night. Uh, and then they discovered that there is an other gene called timeless, which then generates the so-called TIM protein, which uh, bounds with the pair protein in order to facilitate its going back to the uh, back to the nucleus. So that kind of uh, I mean, there are two genes involved in creating this inhibitory. Uh, loop or feedback loop, as if you like. But that, that was not the whole story yet. Then the question came that uh, why 24-hour cycle or about 24-hour cycle? It's not exactly 24 hours. Then they discovered that there must be a third gene, which is called double time. And that produces uh, um, yet another uh, protein, uh, DPT, which creates a kind of uh, delay to this uh, feedback uh, loop to regulate in order to get this uh, about 24-hour cycle taking place. So what, uh, oh, okay. Um, Oh yeah, all right. So in order to produce the 24-hour circadian rhythm, it is actually an interplay uh, of three genes. So you can, uh, it's, a, it's a feedback system where there's also a delay. So from the engineering point of view, it is a kind of, it creates this oscillatory um, um, behavior. Beautiful system, I, I, I must say. Okay, looking at the human individuals and the physiology, so basically we are, uh, our, all our activities are, are um, governed by the circadian um, uh, clock during the uh, 
nighttime, early nighttime, we tend to have high blood pressure, melatonin secretion, and then deep sleep and uh, low po lowest body temperature in the towards the morning hours, and uh, and then cortisol release, and uh, then uh, in the morning fast increase of uh, of uh, blood pressure and high alertness and uh, best coordination in the afternoon and fastest reaction times also in the afternoon. So the circadian clock um, anticipates and adapts uh, our physio physiology to the different phases uh, of the day, so regulate these different uh, uh, bodily functions. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, if there's something goes wrong in that cycle, circadian clock, uh, then our health and well-being is also severed. So then you can ask, uh, ask uh, what are the roles of en environmental factors and uh, also human characteristics and, uh, and the societal structure around us. And further on, where the, um, also I would say the economics came into the picture and uh, our social interactions and so on, you can say that this is basically an interplay between, first of all, biology, environment, our behavior, our social interactions, sociality, in short, and, uh, and also the society as a whole. Okay, if you look at the complexities around us, of course there is the biological um, complexities um, at the single individual um, level. We are not that uh, complex if you, if you look at uh, the numbers of, uh, of our coding genes in comparison with some, some other other uh, entities around, uh, around us. For example, the fruit flies uh, uh, has 60% uh, of the coding genes of us, and then there's a, the C. elegans, the worm, has uh, nearly the same amount, and some plants have even more than us. Then, uh, so that's the individual level. Then there is a psychology and cognitive level, and then the level of uh, so social and societal um, 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 structures. So I mainly concentrate on the, on the social and societal uh, structures. And then uh, looking at the human sociality, and what uh, you can uh, say that basically human social interactions are us telling stories to the others, some kind of stories. Even religion is a story telling to others. So that's the view of the anthropologist, uh, why we are, in a sense, uh, rather unique among the, among the rest of the, rest of the um, uh, bio-ecosystem around us. And the, for that, of course, we have the capability of communicating. We need the language, and, uh, and we have the language, actually, and uh, all structures. We have languages, of course, and all structures around that in order to communicate and exchange social and, uh, and cultural resources in, an, uh, in a structure of, of a network. And, uh, um, what we are, and that, that is the source of the complexity, what emerges in terms of structure function and, uh, and how that system responds to external triggering forces. So how we approach that is indeed uh, from the more macroscopic point of view, but it is not uh, void of uh, getting us inside to the microscopics as well. So the quest we have, or the question we have, is that how does microscopic uh, translate to macroscopic? And uh, in terms of the human sociality, there are different uh, levels in terms of uh, structural 
uh, uh, features, there is the friendship, kinship and so on, groups, uh, communities and the society as a whole. Then uh, it's not the whole story, of course, there is the dynamics involved, the social interaction, uh, events like the phone calls, then the dynamics of the, uh, of the groups, for example, group formation and dynamics in networks like the rumor spreading or um, uh, viral marketing, for example, and uh, things of that sort. So, as I, as I said, our approach is indeed a computational or data-driven. So, uh, we have these uh, databases, big data. We have the faster, faster computers, ever-increasing speed. Uh, we have the science of complex systems uh, and then social sciences and merging them together, together you can call this um, um, transdisciplinary field, I would say, uh, as a social physics or so sociophysics or computational social sciences or data-driven driven discovery. And indeed what we are interested in, the properties of structure, function and response, and how we can approach that is indeed through the analysis of the, of the data, what we have at hand, and also using, having learned something from that, using modeling, uh, modeling and then uh, even simulations, if, if our model has some, some uh, accuracy or telling power in some sense. Okay, so more to the, uh, how we have approached this uh, circadian uh, rhythm issue is that we have had this large mobile phone data set um, uh, at our disposal of a European country which I'm not uh, able to reveal to you but maybe you can conclude during the talk uh, or make guesses. It's a, it's a data set uh, of uh, 10 million uh, service subscribers. Uh, it has 3 billion calls. It has half a billion uh, text messages. And it covers all the calls within that operator and from that operator to other operators of, of, over a whole year, which is two, uh, 2007. In addition, it has the data about the gender of the subscriber, age of the subscriber, postcode of the subscriber where the phone bill is sent, and also the uh, most used uh, tower position uh, in, in communication. But that, that's not all. We have uh, joined that data uh, of that country to other information from that country which is openly available open access uh, uh, data set. You can have access to the seasonal or temper temperature records of that country in different places, a geophysical, the sunset and sunrise, daylight duration and so on, those records. Also some country statistics, the po city populations, uh, distribution of the, of the population and so on. And all this uh, will give us insight. I would like to emphasize anyway that this uh, data is a kind of, in today's perspective, since it is 10 years old, it is a kind of prehistoric, from the pre prehistoric era. What I, mean by, why I mean, what I mean by that is that it is uh, 2007 iPhone, the first uh, real smartphone was introduced and also then after that, uh, Facebook and uh, these social network, other social network services started to emerge in a big, big way. So this is, this data is a kind of, uh, in the old-fashioned sense, social uh, data using only this uh, one, one and one plus channel of, of, of communication, meaning the calls and uh, text messages, which then serves as a kind of proxy of the of the sociality or social network uh, uh, we have. Okay, then we have been asking uh, about the circadian rhythms 
of urban people. We have concentrated to the larger cities so that we have the larger, large enough statistics uh, to discuss about. Uh, so asking uh, in general do seasonal and socially driven factors play a role here and uh, asking first to what extent is the daily behavior of people uh, in urban environments still influenced by the seasonal changes of the daylight. You can imagine that in cities you have a lot of artificial light uh, around the year so then you can legitimately ask what, uh, if, if, the, if the sun has any role in our lives anymore. And then uh, given the social time, by social time that we, have, we are doing social activities, going to work, uh, uh, children going to school and so on, uh, uh, given the social time where, uh, where urban people live in, do the environmental factors like the sunrise, sunset, length of the daylight, and the ambient temperature as well influence the timings and the, and the daily activities, uh, the timings the daily activities are performed. And the other, other, uh, other type of question, do the socially driven activities of people living in different places uh, but inside the same time zone this is a country which is in one time zone, same time zone. On, the onset and terminate, uh, onset and terminate their activities at the same time. Okay, here's the in the uh, green line is the all the distribution of the outgoing goals along the day in a city, and. Uh, uh, and for two sets of consecutive days in two, year 2000. First of all, it is uh, the day 47 means uh, mid-February. Uh, mid so it's uh, in the traditional sense considered uh, winter. And then uh, the day 214 is uh, uh, early, early uh, August. Uh, so it is during the summer. So if you look at the uh, activities, um, uh, then uh, there's uh, uh, people wake up and then the, the activity of calling activity increases but here you see a dip down around the uh, afternoon, mid-afternoon so to speak and then it starts to increase again and then goes down, down and down and then uh, next, next day morning starts to increase and uh, this cycle uh, uh, continues. Okay, the same, same happens here for the, for the summer period. But what we find, find first of all is that, uh, that uh, um, okay, I mean, we have also taken the, of the individual's last call of the day. So that is the blue line of that distribution is the blue line. And then the first call of the day, that's the, uh, the red line, and with that determined uh, the length of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the night, okay, in a certain, uh, certain way. So comparing these two, two days, what you can see is that actually in the summertime, the length of the night, people are inactive or take a rest or so, is actually one hour less. Well, it happens. And then uh, if you look at another observation, quick observation you can make, is this afternoon break period. In some countries they call it siesta. That uh, there's indeed a kind of uh, afternoon break or siesta period here in that country, of course it is culturally um, uh, driven phenomena, but during the winter time uh, less people are, are taking, taking uh, this afternoon break than during the summer. This goes deeper down. Okay, let's analyze that uh, uh, further. Um, so here is the at different latitudes of that, uh, uh, that country looked at uh, 
the measured uh, uh, low um, activity uh, night period, the length of it, uh, as a function of the, of the geological uh, night, from the sunrise, uh, from the sunset to, to sunrise. And indeed, it seems to be um, nicely correlated. Uh, these different uh, dots are different cities. I think we have taken 12 cities at, at the latitudinal band such that we have uh, four, four in each, uh, each um, latitudinal band. And here's the cross correlation, and here is the comparing the weekdays and weekends. What you see is indeed that uh, during the weekends, uh, 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 people are not actually uh, that much um, socially, uh, I mean, uh, social time affected, I mean, going to work and uh, so on. So the seasonal time difference tends to be a larger, uh, oh, sorry, uh, tends to be less. Uh, oh, yeah, it tends to be larger, yes, okay. Those were the red dots, and the weekdays were the red uh, uh, and the blue dots. Okay, then we have concentrated to look at the afternoon uh, break or the, uh, or the siesta. And uh, also looking at different uh, um, uh, latitudinal bands for different, uh, uh, different cities. So it, in each latitudinal band, we have these uh, four, four cities. Uh, and uh, looking at uh, what is the effect of the length of the afternoon break period as a function of the ambient temperature. So then, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, 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 the uh, higher latitude, so to speak, here, it is a bit different, uh, difficult to, um, uh, to separate, but we have found that there is some, some relation to, uh, to, the, uh, to the ambient temperature of the um, uh, of, of, of the high, or maximum ambient temperature of the day. But then if you go to the uh, lower latitudes towards more south, then you have a rather clear uh, tendency that at certain temperature, the, uh, uh, the temperature uh, seems to prolong, make it longer, uh, the, the break in the afternoon. So there's a kind of threshold where it starts to affect, and the threshold is varying between 18 and 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, now we have been looking at uh, both, uh, basically the uh, nightly resting period and then also the, the afternoon uh, resting period, quotes and quotes. So, um, especially if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Sundays, which is less uh, socially driven, so to speak, what you see is that, uh, that uh, uh, here's, here are running the days of the year, and then uh, as a function of that, during the summertime, the length of the uh, afternoon breaks this uh, starts to increase and uh, peaks around uh, kind of uh, uh, summer solstice uh, period. Uh, and then at the same time, if you look at the, uh, the nighttime resting period, that dips down. And if you then sum these two things, basically it uh, it is a flat curve. It doesn't seem to change. So we are, uh, we can perhaps conclude that uh, uh, the resting period, 
per day is more or less constant what we, what we are having uh, throughout the population in big cities. And the same uh, tendency you can see uh, during the other days and at other, other um, uh, uh, latitudes, but not so much during the uh, weekdays, because we are indeed socially, socially uh, 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 driven. The, the effect is still there, but I mean uh, weaker. Okay, so the total uh, time uh, for rest for people is more or less unaltered throughout the year. Okay, uh, uh, this is the noct uh, nocturnal or the nightly resting period uh, for people at different uh, age and for uh, different uh, uh, gender. Against the kind of notion we have had that uh, young people should, uh, should uh, take longer rests uh, because they need more, more sleep, it seems that especially the people at the age of um, 20 to 30, they actually take less. They should perhaps take more, but they take uh, less uh, uh, less, especially uh, when, there, when, there's, when there's the weekend. Of course, I mean, going to the parties and so, uh, you don't have time to, time to sleep. Okay. Yet another interesting observation we made in terms of looking at, uh, at uh, um, uh, longitude uh, 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 within that country. We took uh, took some reference uh, 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 longitude and then uh, uh, going uh, from, uh, from that longitude to east, I mean, I think it's, um, yeah, uh, three, de uh, three degrees east and 7.7 .7 degrees um, west from that reference and looked at, the, uh, at the, um, basically the, uh, the uh, last call of the night and, uh, uh, and the first call of the, of the, of the following um, day. And what we see is that when you go from, the, um, from um, east, um, to west, it seems that uh, at the time people stop their um, activities uh, goes uh, later. Uh, west, they uh, go uh, later to bed, so to speak, or uh, uh, start to be less active. And, uh, and then uh, then the same same thing uh, also happens in the in the morning. So the people in the west start their um, day uh, uh, later. Remind, uh, I want to remind that uh, this is one time zone. Uh, the country is in one time zone. So then then we uh, took that. Um, uh, Okay, the degree difference uh, with reference to the, um, uh, the, the reference point, zero, zero to longitude, so to speak, it's not the actual zero to longitude, uh, uh, and shift it accordingly. And, uh, okay, thank you. Shift it accordingly such that, um, okay, remind, uh, as a reminder, I should say that uh, 15 degrees is actually one one hour time shift. So this 10.73 plus 7.7 .7, uh, corresponds roughly speaking 42 to 43 minutes. So actually we have done this according, accordingly shift and basically we have what the physicists call a data collapse. The, the, uh, the curves come on top of each other 
uh, more or less. So it means that uh, indeed people in the big cities, in the urban environment, still follow the east-west progression of the, of the sun, which is rather surprising, I would say, because we have artificial light. So we are still uh, synchronized by uh, our behavior and daily activities, synchronized by the, by the east-west progression of the, of the sun. I find that rather rather surprising. I, I can understand that it happens in the in the rural area because I mean uh, farmers uh, have to have to follow that uh, uh, because of the of the animals as well. But in the cities as well, seemingly. So here is the uh, basically the um, uh, looking at the uh, uh, correlations, and indeed it seems to be. These are the different points are uh, different cities, and they seem to, at different latitudes, seem to uh, fall on more or less on that line. Okay, so to conclude, of course, uh, we are still very much uh, uh, driven by or governed by our, our fu human functions are governed by uh, the internal biological uh, clock. Uh, uh, but uh, in that, so in that sense, I can say that we are like fruit flies. But also there is an environmental and socially driven factors which play a role not very strong at times and different, at different latitudes and different places, but still they are there. And, uh, and so certainly if you look at uh, this, uh, from this country, they have this afternoon uh, 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 break. And, uh, and uh, I was just uh, two weeks ago, I was in, in, in Korea and although it is more or less at the same latitude, even souther, and they have the same similar kind of uh, temperatures in the, in the summer, they, say, they are saying that no way they are having, having siesta. And so, uh, so it is culturally uh, driven as, uh, as, as well. So to say uh, the resting period of human living in urban environments are influenced by environmental factors. Nocturnal or re nightly resting period depends strongly on the length of the daylight and its seasonal influence depends on the latitudes. And then the length of the di di diurnal, meaning daily resting, the daytime resting um, uh, period depends on the ambient temperature as well. This dependence is present only when, the, when a certain threshold temperature, around 25 or so, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, reached. And then, uh, uh, then the uh, daily and uh, nightly resting periods uh, uh, are subject to seasonal changes, though the total daily resting period seems to be constant or at least unaltered across the year. The onset and termination of daily activities of human living uh, at different uh, graphical longitudes but inside the same time zone are synchronized with the east-west progression of the sun and age-related differences in the nocturnal resting period and uh, mid-sleep time. I didn't go into that but uh, that's one of the <coughs> measures uh, chronobiologists uh, uh, are, are, are using in their studies. They can be measured from the period of low calling activity of the mobile phone uh, users. So this is a kind of indirect way, but it's, it's telling from different perspective quite a bit. And uh, uh, these findings uh, are uh, are uh, published in two, two article scientific reports and uh, most computational biology. And I thank you.
for your attention.